new out from 88 films is Paganini Horror, number 52 on the Italian collection series that they run. A series of films I do actually quite like. Usually I know nothing about them, but I'm happy just to go along. And sometimes it can be weird and wacky. Most of the time they're kind of wonderful or something very different and very unique. This one, again, another one I didn't know much about other than the director, Luigi Cosi, who has been involved with a few other movies um, that I kind of like. So I was curious about going to check this one out. And of course, that cover, which is... How could you not watch it after seeing that? It just it promises so much. It's probably hard for it to deliver on the, the promises that this cover makes because it looks amazing. And basically what you have is you have the story of this trio girl band who are struggling for a hit um, and one of their production uh, assistants manages to score this piece of music that has been seemingly lost for years uh, from the composer Paganini who as himself has a bit of a history. It seems as though he sold his soul for fame and fortune centuries ago and this piece of music has just magically appeared in these girls hands. They turn it into a hit song and with a hit song you need a hit video to go with it. So they go to a house where Paganini once lived to film uh, this music video and of course play this music which wouldn't you believe it just happens to bring this mad composer back from hell with a bloodthirsty taste. It's basically just one location, this big house, eh, a bunch of folk being murdered by the spirit of this composer. And it kind of does what it says in the tin, but it never really achieves the wackiness that I hoped it was going to get. The characters, even though they may be a little two dimensional, were still fun to spend time with. I liked the trio of girls that were in the band. I liked a couple of the production assistants. I liked the producer who was a bit uh, a bit catty uh, with her comments but it was all driven by the money but I kind of liked her anyway. I, I liked the director as well, I liked the way he was going about his business. I liked most of the characters. Nobody was really obnoxious or grating to the point where I, I was put off because they were so caricatured and I was just waiting on the craziness to happen. Now the, one of the weird things of many that this movie does is it has the form of Paganini which is exactly the same as the outfit that you have within the music video. And I was unsure whether there's something supernatural happening or whether someone was just wearing the suit to kill people off in a kind of slasher fashion. I almost feel as if I'd have been happier with that kind of element. Now in this movie as well, there's one more character and that is Donald Pleasant's character who, oh, this must have been one of the easiest jobs he ever had. He's literally in three, four scenes max, they're minimal. And he's probably just on holiday getting paid for being there. It's a nothing character that really adds nothing much to the movie and doesn't feel essential. You could easily have cut all his parts out and, you know, it would have been completely fine. One of the things I love with Italian movies is the gore. They generally just go for it. They're not shy or not willing to just pull away. They want to deliver the kind of gore that you would love. And you get tastes of it here. Little bits that just show it. There's a full body that looks to have been boiled in oil which is a terrific set piece. It looks great but we don't get too much of that. We don't get enough of that. When we get to the spooky goings on it seems to drag rather than ramp up the tension and when we get to the final third it feels almost pedestrian. I just want to get to the next stage. Why can't we get there sooner rather than later? And with like a lot of these kind of movies, they feel this need to just throw in a twist at the end that feels obligatory but unimportant and not really essential either. But they throw this one in here at the end and you just kind of like, okay, fine. It was a movie that never went in the direction I wanted. I wanted more weirdness than it actually had. I was never sure uh, what exactly it was trying to latch on to. It's ripping off several different movies along the way, but it never really ups the ante on any of them. Like I said, it has some good gore, but not enough to make it memorable enough to go back to that. Uh, ultimately, I, I had fun with Paganini Horror. I thought it was entertaining enough, but when I look at the Italian collection and I look for a movie that I want to throw on, it's not going to be near the top of the pile. Still, it wasn't a waste of time either. Like I said, funny enough, just not great enough to be absolutely 
memorable. I'd love to know your thoughts on Paganini Horror, what you like about it, what you didn't like about it. Let me know in the comment box below and I'll see you next time on Man vs Film.